it's Maria from designbymaria.com. I am a graphic designer and math paraprofessional. In this video, I want to give you some tips and tricks on how to teach multiplication to third graders. Usually, we start teaching multiplication in third grade because students are ready for it. They can count, they can add with regrouping, and they're ready to multiply. A lot of kids actually start learning in second grade now. So even though I will be showing you using this kit that I designed, I will also show you examples that you can do with things that you have around your home, probably whiteboards, markers, pencils, paper. This kit is divided into three sections, concrete, pictorial, and abstract. Concrete is just a way for kids to use their hands and learn what multiplying is all about. I have some things that you can hang in your classroom to help remind the students. Multiplying is adding equal groups. You can make your own visuals to help kids remember this. And another thing I like to tell kids is, you know, we talk about times. Well, really, it's just adding the same number up so many times. There is a paper that shows several different examples of multiplying, and the students will see that in some of the pictures, maybe it says 2 plus 2 plus 3. Well, is that an example of multiplying? It's not because we don't have equal groups. So on this worksheet, they could cross that out, but you could also make your own examples. Another important skill for kids to know when multiplying is how we write a multiplication equation. So we have a number, and that's the number of groups, and then we do our times symbol, and then we do another number, and this is the number in each group and then we put equals and the total all together. You could have the number added together so many times and then they write the equation that goes with it. You could also draw an array or pictures of groups and have students write the equation that goes with that picture and they can easily count how many objects there are. Another fun thing to do when we're introducing multiplication is do some hands-on learning. So you could use Skittles or cereal or beans, whatever kind of little objects you can find. Give each student some of these objects to use as manipulatives. If you choose to download the set that I have, it also comes with some other little visuals that you can use to solve word problems that they can place the objects on each one of these things as they work through the word problems that are given to them. But if you don't want to buy the kit, that's fine. Just use some beans or little pieces of cereal, whatever you have, and then give them an example word problem, and they fill in how many they need to. Another fun concrete method to teach kids is using their fingers. A lot of kids use their fingers, and actually we encourage kids to use their fingers. It's a great tool. They have it with them all the time. I actually list out different ways to use your fingers to multiply. The first one is count buys. So a lot of kids learn to count by twos and fives and tens really fast and easily so they can use their fingers. For example, if they had an equation that was like two times eight, they would count on their fingers by twos eight times. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Sometimes it's hard to show on your fingers, okay, see this? So I actually have included in the printables these files and you'll notice that our fingers are made up of segments and then there's also lines on our fingers so if you want to count by threes on your fingers you can count the segments one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen 19, 20, 21. So you can just count the segments. If you want to count by fours, you can count on the tip of the finger and then the lines. So we would count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There's also one that shows the front of the hand. And there's lots of fun tricks that we can do using the front of our hand. We could even draw a picture of our hands and we could draw, for example, if we had a problem like six times seven, we could draw six dots on seven of our fingers 
and then count them up and see how many there are. A lot of kids love the nines trick. It's so much fun for them to do because nines seem like a big number. How are they going to add it up? But using our fingers, we can use this little trick. I always have to remind the students when we start this, this only works for nines. Don't try using it on other numbers. So hold your hands out in front of you. Each finger has a number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Put down the number that you're timesing by nine. So if we were doing nine times three, we would put down our third finger. All the fingers that are in front of the finger that's down are how many are in your tens place. All the fingers that come after the fingers that are down are the fingers that go in the ones place. So we have two in front of our finger that's down and seven behind it. 27 is our answer on that one. Another great way to multiply is using arrays. When we're doing concrete multiplication, maybe we're not quite ready to draw our own arrays yet, but we're going to work into that by using our hands on fun tactile things. So if I gave the example of four times three, we would put four beans going down and three beans going over fill it up and count how many we have. Well, that's it for the concrete portion of this kit. The pictorial methods are really where we're gonna spend the most of our time. I do have some classroom things that go along with this um, to help kids understand that these numbers are called factors and then our answer is called a product when we're multiplying. There's some fun worksheets included in this kit where we have some visuals that kids can add to. So they start thinking about drawing pictures of their math equations. I love including word problems in every step along the way. If you choose not to buy this kit, you can still show kids examples of word problems that you make up yourself. We just wanna make sure that we have equal groups. And here's an example that I wrote on a whiteboard for my daughter. So let's say that we have two vases and there are six flowers in each vase. Kids will tend to want to draw really elaborate pictures for these, but remember, math pictures are simple is what I remind them. I love art, so it's hard for me to say that, but I do. <laughs> there are four ways that we can go through of how to show multiplication, and there's pictures that I have in this kit for each section, and as you go through them, you can hang them on your wall in your classroom to help kids remember. Um, you can also make these yourself on some poster board showing ways to multiply. I've seen some online that are really, they're great. So that works too. So the first one is repeated addition. So it's just important for kids to understand two times seven is just seven added together two times. It's not hard. Sometimes they wanna make it complicated, but it's really not. There's a worksheet that goes along with this where there's a multiplication equation given, and then the students write out what the repeated addition is that goes with that. Have them write it on their whiteboard. Another way to show multiplication is equal groups. A lot of students really like this way of visually showing it, and this helps with division. This works with division and stuff too. So these things are all helping us get ready to divide. Um, so on this example, we have three groups with six in each. Another way we can show multiplication is arrays. Arrays are really great and we use these a ton. It can also lead into showing the distributive property and things like that. So arrays are a great way to show multiplication. So basically it's just showing four times five means that I have four rows and there are five objects in each row. So we can draw a picture using dots, four going down, five going over in each row, and then just count up the dots. Once the students learn to create an array, it's really easy to teach the commutative property. Two times five, when turned the other way, is the same as five times two. Another way to show multiplication is skip counting. Just like I was saying, kids are great at counting by tens or fives and twos. They love doing this. So skip counting is a great way to show multiplication. This kit includes a worksheet, a skip counting worksheet. You could also draw your own number line and have kids skip count. Make sure to start with zero. And for example, they could skip count by twos and they're just jumping 
every even number, 0 to 2, 2 to 4, all the way up, counting by twos six times, and they would come up with 12. The kit also includes this number line. So you just it's just one piece of paper and you cut it out and glue it together and it makes this number line all the way up to 100. You can laminate this and fold it up and put it in their folders and they can pull it out. Use their dry erase marker to skip count on that one. Once the students find a pictorial strategy that makes sense to them and that they're successful with, they can use that strategy again and again to solve multiplication equations. These pictorial strategies will lead into showing kids how to make multiple lists. So you'll spend most of your time showing the pictorial methods and practicing these on the whiteboards in class or using worksheets. And then once they've got the hang of it, kids are going to start wanting to go a little faster on their times tables. And this is where we spent so much of our time growing up, I feel like, is memorize, memorize, memorize. And I think it's great to practice them so much that, you know, you really do sort of start to memorize them. But that's not the most important thing. They need to understand what they're doing, why to do it, and when to do it. So as you're working on these more abstract skills, there are a few things in this kit that can help you out. So there's a set of flashcards for each number, and you can print them front to back so that the answers are on the back, and students can help each other with these, work as a team, and practice these. Um, it's great to have a classroom set of flashcards. If you don't want to buy this set, you can find flashcards at the dollar store, create your own, or there, I'm sure there's other online resources as well. I also have a worksheet, one for each number that they can practice multiplying, and then I also have um, one with mixed, and of course, word problems. I love word problems. I think they're really important for kids. So on these ones, on these worksheets where it's just one number that they're multiplying over and over and over, it's the same number, this is the eighth sheet. What I like to encourage kids to do is to start with a multiple list. A lot of students that really struggle with multiplication do really well with multiple lists. And I've seen a lot of fourth grade teachers have students, even fifth grade teachers, have students write a multiple list and it will really help them in the future. So knowing how to write a multiple list is a great skill to have. Um, so in this example, I gave my daughter three multiplication problems that were all eights and I asked her if she would do a multiple list of eights to help her solve these problems. So how you do it is you start at the top by writing the number eight. We're making a list of eights and then you can draw eight dots or you can count eight times on your fingers. And we're just going to count up. So we're going to start with eight and count up to 16 and count up to 24 and count up again to 32, 40, and 48. And we can go all the way up to 80 if we need to. And this would be great to do on these multiplication problems where it's just one number that you're focusing on. Have them write it down the side. Have them write there. As they get those numbers written down, then they can use it to find all the answers, and kids love that. Multiple lists of nines are one of their most favorite because they're so quick and easy. Simply have the students write from zero to nine down the side of their whiteboard or paper. Then start at the bottom with zero again and go up to nine. I like to have them erase the zero at the end or cross it out because sometimes that confuses kids. That zero nine, it's just the same as nine. I've seen some teachers that use multiplication songs. I'm sure there's tons on the internet and I know one teacher that had like a CD of all the different songs and I've heard my fourth and fifth graders singing these songs as they're doing their problems. So I know they stick with them and they remember them. Every student is not going to always memorize or remember all of their multiplication facts. So they need to have these tools to help them figure it out. This is kind of just the skeleton of teaching multiplication and I hope it helps you in your teaching. Thanks so much for your time.